Welcome back, Gems, to another episode of the Grateful Gem Podcast. I'm the host, Jasmine Chanel, and today we are talking about looking back at it. Stick around because gems are definitely about to get dropped, so get ready. I need everyone listening to this podcast episode to follow us on Instagram at the Grateful Gym Pod and also follow me at Jasmine Chanel. Don't worry, I spelled everything out and left it in the notes below. Take a look. See you there. Now let's get into this episode. Welcome back, Gems. I'm so excited. We're on another episode. You guys are still here listening. I'm so excited. I really want to talk on this subject today about looking back at it. And the it is your life. Looking back over the last 12 months, the last year, I was reflecting yesterday on some things that I had been praying for around the same time last year. And I'm reflecting on what I'm praying for now. So I really think that these things will help us because we have to be able to look back over our life and figure out and realize what God has already done for us. So if we're in a season of uncertainty or needing clarification, we can definitely get that from ourselves and wait for God while he's working on our behalf. Because even if it feels like God is not listening or God is not answering you, trust me, he is. He will not forsake you. He will not not listen to you. Um, Sometimes it's at a point where God will answer our prayer. God will send us the signs that we're asking for, but we have to have faith in what it is that he's showing us and also believe in what it is that he's telling us, even if we disagree. So I really want to get into this episode today. So for one, what I did was I was, I keep journals. I know you guys know about my journals already. I talk about them all the time, but I keep personal journals and I don't lose them. Like I don't get rid of them after I complete them. I hold on to them and I look back over what I have written in the past years and where I'm at now. I'm um in a new journal and I'm almost finished with it. I got it last October and I'll probably have like five or six more pages left. I do. I've been doing a lot of journaling, you guys <laughs> trying to plan out everything. But yeah, so I have these journals and I keep track of my life in these journals. I look back over what it is that I'm praying for, what it is that I'm talking about, what am I saying, where I am in this season of my life, because this book is literally where I have been for the last 12 months. I've been sitting here figuring out, trying to figure out, you know, why am I still in this place? What is it that I'm praying for? Where have I grown from? Where has God answered? Where have I moved from? So if you don't have any journals, I really suggest that you get some, you know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to write in my little diary, (laughs) but I really think that it will really help you. It helps me and it lets you be able to look back over what God has already done for you. Because sometimes we don't see a situation clear we see it double-sided and we don't see it in God's eyes um honestly we'll never see it in his eyes but I feel like if we're able to at least look back over something that we were praying for and God answered that prayer clear as day and we were able to understand what it was he was saying we should be able to look back over what God is doing in our life right now and say okay God you moved this mountain before you will definitely move it again and he may not answer the prayer or answer what it is that you're praying about in the same way that he's answered you before So that comes to a part where you really have to understand how God communicates with you. It's funny because me and my best friend, me and him was having a conversation the day before yesterday about how God speaks to us. And we were talking about, you know, how to hear when God's answering you to a prayer, how he is telling you to move about something. And I was telling him, you know, the number one thing is to know how God communicates to you. If you don't know how God answers you and you don't know how God is speaking to you, that's the first thing that you need to do. The first thing that you need to do again is fight, find out how God speaks to you. For me, God uses other people. And I'm going to say this, but I'm going to say it in another way because he doesn't use everybody there's sometimes where people have come up to me and said something about something that you know I've been praying about or something that has been on my heart and it doesn't really resonate with what God is saying so you have to be able to discern it and I've talked about this previously in a lot of podcasts I'll link those 
recommended ones down so that you can hear those as well and go back and line it up to what God says. That is what you have to do. You have to take what people are telling you about your situation and line it up with what God says to you or what God says about you, what God says to us as his children, because you don't want to be led astray by someone else or not even led astray by yourself because you're listening to an outside force that wasn't sent by God. It could have been sent from the devil and it could have been a false prophet because those are real. And that is a part, honestly, where I get upset because I know people that let other people speak into their life and they don't take back what that person is speaking into their life and line it up with what God said about their life. And it really is important because you can spend your life going down a path that you were never meant to walk on because people see the potential and they want to put a calling over your life that God hasn't even qualified you for or not even qualified because he doesn't have to qualify. He qualifies us for what it is that we do. So yes, I said that right. People put you in predicaments where God didn't qualify. You may be qualified. You may have a degree. You may have went to school. You may have people recommending this for you, but God didn't call you there. So you could be sitting here for 12 months, three years, four years in a profession, in a relationship, hanging out with the wrong friends, hanging out with the wrong crowd, going to the wrong church, living in the wrong city, living in the wrong house, in the wrong neighborhood, because someone told you this is what God told them to tell you. And you have to be able to really discern what it is that God is telling you, because it's really important. You have to know when God is speaking and when God is not speaking. So I think that is really key. So if you're taking notes today, I really think that you should put that down first. Learn how God speaks to you. For me, God speaks to me, again, through people. But whenever someone says anything about something that I have going on, I line it up and give it back to God. And I pray about it. I ask him to reveal what it is that he's, that this person is saying. If this person was sent from him and if what that person is saying resonates with what God confirms back to me. Once I've done that, I pray again about it to make sure because I am overanalyzing you guys. I think about everything more than once. <laughs> and even if God is sending me signs, literally, you can ask my friends. I just am like, no, he couldn't. God couldn't have said that. Like, I'm just going to wait for the next sign because <laughs> this can't be the sign that he's sending me. So, you know, you have to be able to know how God speaks to you. The second way that God speaks to me is in dreams. I have had this blessing for a long time. And I say blessing in quotations because it's a blessing and a curse because God will reveal something to me in a dream and then it'll happen in reality. And it scares me sometimes to be honest because I feel like I'm having deja vu and I'm in a situation where it's like, God, I've seen this before and it may not happen a hundred percent according to the dream, but 99% 99% of that dream comes to reality and it freaks me out because it's like, oh, like you would think that by now I would be a little bit more into this, but I'm not. Um, but that is how he communicates with me through dreams. And um, when things happen in life that I say that, you know, if I find myself saying that, oh, this is a great coincidence, I know that it's not a coincidence. It's sent by God because I personally don't believe in coincidences. I believe that everything happens for a reason. You know, God has already shaped out our life. So everything that happens is planned for us. And we have to be able to look at the signs because I feel like coincidences are signs. They're signs sent from God. So when something happens, you're like, what were the odds of this? And you have to think about it. There is no odds. Like this was lined up for a reason, but you have to figure out what that reason is. So again, first thing is figuring out how God communicates to you. For me, it's through other people, not everyone, but through certain people and two for dreams. Um, I have dreams all the time about things that I'm supposed to do, about things that's going to happen, about a lot of things. And, you know, you just have to be able to figure out what it is and how it is that God communicates with you. Is it through um, sermons? God talks to me through sermons as well all the time. But it's just basically confirming something that he's already said in a dream or confirming something that somebody said. So the sermon is really the confirmation for me. And I would say that's the next step. So after you figure out what God is telling you, No, sorry. After you figure out how God communicates to you, you need to figure out what it is that he's telling you. And that's going to be through your confirmation. So what is your confirmation? How does God confirm things for you? Is it through signs in the world? You know, is it through sermons? Is it through Bible verses? I've had instances where I've had something on my mind and I pray about it and I've opened my Bible and there's a Bible verse that just gets me together. Um, For instance, I 
have been, um, God has called me to, um, help people, you know, God has put people on my heart and I'm like, okay, God, sometimes I feel unqualified because I'm still getting my own life together, but God sees potential in me that I don't even see, you know? So I don't, always understand sometimes I do question God about like you know why are you calling me to help this person or why are you calling me to do this for this person when I can't really 100% do it for myself and I realized that you know we're not called to help ourselves God is here to help us and we have to be able to lean on his word we have to be able to stay rooted in his kingdom and his his word, his Bible, and know that God has a better plan for us. So we can't do anything on our in our strength on our own for ourselves, but we're able to help other people through the strength that he provides. So sometimes I get frustrated, I get annoyed because I'm like, okay, God, I don't know what it is that you do and or that you want me to do. And, you know, God has put, like recently, God has put I'm a person on my heart and I procrastinated for a while. And to be honest, it's been a few years that this person has just popped up out of nowhere. And I found myself saying like, this is so crazy. This is a big coincidence. And I knew that I don't believe in coincidences. So I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, it's either I'm going to seek God on this or I'm just going to keep procrastinating. But I feel like the longer I procrastinate, whatever it is that I'm supposed to do to help this person, it's not going to get done because I'm procrastinating and because I don't believe in myself. And I had to really go to God and say, you know, God, what, what do you want me to do? Like, I can't help this person. Like, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a prophet. I'm not, you know, I'm not this person, this saint that can go out here and just transform, transform, sorry, somebody's life into a miracle. Like, I can't do that. And literally I was sitting at home. I was watching this video by this lady, Sarita, off of Instagram. And she was asking, you know, what is the last thing that you, that God has called you to do and you didn't do it? And immediately I knew what it was. God was calling me to help this person and I wasn't doing it. And I was helping them, but helping them at a distance. So it was like, God was like, no, you need to do more. You need to be involved. And I was just like, oh, I don't want to do this. Like, I just, I can't. How do you want me to do it? What do you want me to do? Like, I'm not understanding. So... After that, I, you know, just continued to pray and I opened my Bible and I opened my Bible to a Bible verse that really just honestly got me together. And I really knew that it was a time where God was calling me to do this. And it was crazy because I didn't, in the beginning when I first have, start having these dreams and this person was on my mind, I really didn't know what it is that was going on, I really, because I hadn't really, like, tapped into how God communicated with me. I really didn't really understand it. I was still figuring it out, still trying to figure out, you know, what was going on. So, I just was like, oh, this is just a coincidence. I kept saying, like, this is so crazy. This is a coincidence. I haven't seen this person in God knows how many years. I don't understand why I'm having these dreams and all of these things are going on. I really don't know. And... All I did was literally open my Bible, you guys. And I was like, okay, Lord, like, I need you to communicate with me. And I need you to let me know (laughs) what it is that you want me to do. Like, you're calling me to help this person. You're calling me to do all of these things. And I really don't know what I'm supposed to do. So when I opened my Bible, I saw Joshua 9, 1, and it says, have I not, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, wherever thou shalt go. And basically in New England Living Translation (laughs) or New Jasmine Translation, what this is saying is, have I not called you to do something? Don't doubt yourself. Don't be afraid. Don't worry about what it is that I'm telling you to do. Don't worry about if you have the strength to do it because I will provide that strength. And honestly, that's where I was. I was at a point where I was afraid because I'm like, I don't want to lead this person astray. I don't want to tell them something that is not from you. I don't want to reach out to this person if this is not what I'm supposed to do. I don't want to prematurely reach out if I'm not supposed to. I'm going to pray for this person and I feel like that's all I can do. I felt like, you know, I didn't really understand what God was telling me because I'm like, you know, this has been going on for years and I just brushed it off like, oh, this is a big coincidence. And it wasn't just like me having dreams about this person. Like I was having dreams and then like people were like, 
sending me pictures of, of him and I'm just like this is weird like why I just dreamed about him like two weeks ago and then now my friend is sending me this picture like oh girl look at him and I'm like oh yeah you know that's such and such and then I was scrolling on Instagram one day and I saw him and I was like this is crazy because we don't follow each other on Instagram so I was just like you know God and I was kind of annoyed because I'm like Lord okay I don't get it like what do you want me to do and so fast forward to like this happened like maybe Let's see, this was back in, this was last year, like the end of December, when I really started like digging into like trying to figure out what was going on because I have been having issues, even when we were like in connection with each other and I was just like, I don't understand it, but you know, okay, whatever, it's just a dream. And so now because I'm so heightened in my spirituality and I know how God speaks to me and I know that, you know, for this person to keep popping up over time I even thought it was crazy how we got back in contact because we went to middle school together and I just was like okay you know this is a crazy coincidence like what's the odds of meeting back with somebody and you know acting as if like we never lost touch and it was crazy because I didn't I couldn't stand him in middle school but we're not gonna get into that that's another episode (laughs) but point of the story is you need to know how God communicates with you and be strong be courageous in what it is that God is telling you so you know when I saw Joshua 9 1 I was just like oh I literally was just like in pieces I'm like God oh like no you wasn't supposed to say this you were supposed to say I'm not telling you to do nothing like (laughs) you were supposed to say just go about your day not be have I not commanded to you like and I knew God had been calling me to do something but I was like I don't know what you want me to do like I'm not this person that can just change lives and bring him back to you like I can talk about me and how you've blessed me and how good you are and God was just like that's what I need you to do like once this is presented to you once you come into contact and I present the opportunity to you I need you to let this person matter of fact it's not even let this person know who I am but I need you to be yourself I need you to talk this person through whatever it is that they're going through not only just pray for them because what I honestly want to do and I say want to do because this is still currently going on what I honestly wanted to do was just pray for him and I'm still praying for him and I honestly was praying the other day because I'm like Lord okay I did everything I, you asked me to I'm doing everything that you told me to do I don't understand why I'm still having these dreams about you I don't know what it is that you want me to do so and God was just like in time it'll all make sense and I'm like okay well I don't know what else to do and I guess the only thing I can do honestly right now is just be patient and in my patience, I'm getting annoyed because it's just like, God, I don't, I seriously don't know what else you want me to do. I can count back. This started in like 2014. So we're in 2020 now. So I'm not really understanding what it is that you want me to do. <laughs> like, I've done everything that I can think of that you've told me to do. And, you know, even when this is how, like, I started looking back over my life, I was reading my journal from this season that I'm in and I started writing in October and now we're in what March and so it's crazy because I remember around this time and you can go back and listen to my podcast and hold me accountable to what I'm saying but I remember that around this time I did a three-day fast I did a five-day fast and a seven-day fast and I did a three-day fast regarding my career I did a five-day fast regarding my relationship, and I did a seven-day fast regarding whether I should move back to Atlanta or if I should find a place here. And I was, like, reflecting on this yesterday, and I'm like, this is so crazy. Like, God, we sit in seasons, and we pray, and we stress, and we worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. And I literally... I can sit here and say that I'm at a new job, a job that I love. I am at a different location, you know, living my best life. I am not in that relationship that I was praying about. And it's like now I'm not even fasting that way anymore, if that makes sense. Like I'm not fasting for clarity on making decisions regarding those issues anymore because God has already spoken to me and called me to do different things and I think about how many times we don't really hear God's voice and we don't really know what it is that God 
has for us. And that's just the backstory of how I started this podcast or what made me start this podcast. Because last year around this time, I decided that I was going to literally put God first. My church that I attend, their line is the God First Life. And I really had to dig into that. And that's that celebration, you guys. So if you haven't found a church from I suggest you check it out. I'm not saying that you have to join it, but I don't think you'd be disappointed. They have a location in Orlando. They have one in Jacksonville. They have several in Jacksonville, several in Orlando. They have some other places too, but I don't know um, where they are. And I'll link their website on the thing as well if you're at a location that you can attend and just check it out but um yeah their slogan is the god first life and i have this sticker on my car that says the god first life and then sometimes i wonder it's like wonder i wonder how people would feel they saw me like riding down the street cussing somebody out or cutting somebody off in traffic and doing all this stuff and then you have this picture or this slogan on the back of your car that says the god first life and it's like are you seriously putting god first when you're doing that like so sometimes i have to be mindful when i'm driving and be mindful like when i'm blasting my music because you know i and i've noticed that i don't really listen to the type of music that i used to listen to i moved over to like a different genre i've always been an r&b girl but i'm leaning more towards like some different stuff so I just think that's amazing. But anyways, back on topic. Yeah, so their slogan is the God first life. And we really had to, or I really had to sit down and think about, well, what does this mean? Like the God first life. And for me, in my own words, I feel like for me, it was literally putting God first, you know, not only in our ties, not only in going to church, but in our everyday life. And I decided at that point I was going to literally start living a God first life because I have been a member at this church since like 2015 and you know I haven't always put God first I've put myself first or put my needs first put what I wanted to do first and I felt like you know it's a long time coming that I just needed to put God first and stop doing things in my own shift because I don't know everything I think I know I know sometimes I feel like I know everything but I don't (laughs) so I literally decided that, you know, I'm going to start praying about things before I make these decisions. I'm going to start seeking God. And I literally have been doing that. Um, Before, right now, I'm praying and believing God for a lot of things in 2020. And I really think that they're all going to come to pass. But I want to make sure that the options that are in these things that I'm believing in is the options that God has for me. So before... Um, I'm going to, of course, prepare because either situation still requires me to prepare. I don't want to just wait for God to say yes to this or yes to that. But I want to prepare myself for yes or no. So it's like if he says no, OK, cool. I'm still preparing because the other option allows me to still prepare in that same way. So I feel like that putting God first, it makes you not waste time, you know. Um, putting him first I decided to put him first in everything so in my relationship so now I've just ended my previous relationship as you guys already know and now I'm just looking at dating differently um looking at the people that I entertain as prospective dates or boyfriends potential fiancés husbands you know I'm looking at that differently because when I look back over my relationships I've always been in long-term relationships with the wrong people and not saying that they were bad people but it's just that they weren't the one for me and I'm at a point now where I'm just like I'm not even worried about a relationship I'm honestly just working on myself because God has really really brought a lot of things to light in this year and we're only three months in so that's why I really think that it's very important that you get clear on what it is that God is saying to you and in order to do that you have to know how God communicates to you and you have to know what God is telling you confirm what he's telling you send it back to him and make sure that the confirmation that he's sending you is from him and not from someone who sees the potential in what you can do you have to learn how to say yes to what God is saying and not what to people are saying over you that is very very important Are you loving this episode? Great. Don't forget to leave your feedback by rating and leaving a review on Apple iTunes. Also, don't forget to subscribe anywhere, wherever you're listening to this podcast. And make sure that you follow us on Instagram to keep up in the know of what's going on with the podcast. Okay, let's get back to the episode. 
So, yes, I really think that that is very important. So, let's just backtrack. So, the first thing that you need to do is, I would say, honestly, the first thing that you need to do is put God first. Decide whether you're going to put God first and put him first for real. After you put God first, figure out how God speaks to you, what that looks like. After you figure out what God or how God speaks to you, figure out how he confirms what you're praying for and what he's saying to you once you send it back to him in prayer. And the third thing I feel like you need to do in order to be able to keep looking forward into your life and move forward with what he's telling you to do is to continue to prepare. So as I stated previously, that even though, you know, I have a few different things that I'm trying to do this year, I want to make sure that I'm fully prepared because I want to make sure that I'm making the right decision. So God could come back and say, okay, we're, say if I pray for this in January, God could literally come in August and say, yeah, you can do this. But what if I'm trying to do this by December? So is it realistic for me to then prepare in August and be ready for to do this in December? No, it's not realistic. Depending on what the plan is, if it's um anything, obviously you need time to prepare and plan. So I feel like you should get everything that you're believing God for this year, whether if it's, it's a business, a new job, a new place, a home, um, buying a home rather getting a new car, finding a new relationship, finding new friends, getting closer with your family, building your credit, being debt free, whatever it is that you can believe in God for, because you don't want to wait till God says yes to start doing what it is that he said that you can do. You want to start preparing and making sure that you have a plan. So when God confirms that, yes, this is what I want you to do, because at the end of the day, you can still, God can still want you to buy a house, but you may not have to pay off all of your debt in order to do that. Um, I've heard several testimonies where people have paid off their homes and had to pay little as three hundred dollars down for a home because of the grace of God and they still have things on their credit so you may not necessarily have to go through all these hoops in order to get what God has already granted you you get what I'm saying so you have to be able to figure out what it is that God is telling you to do once he confirms that you can do it and you have to be able to know when to do it and what to do because those are very important if you wait too long it's going to delay the process god says yes so if, even if you wait too late it's just going to be delayed so it's really about you once god gives you confirmation that you can move forward with these things you have to have a mindset of okay i'm going to do this and that's like me so for 2020 i'm believing god for a lot of things you guys and i've written it down i want to buy a house but i also have still been moved, thinking about moving to atlanta so Either option gives me still the option to save money. So I've been putting in place a savings plan, trying to figure out how much money I can realistically save by the time my lease ends. And if I don't have enough money by the time my lease ends, what I should do. So I'm praying about that, asking for confirmation. I feel like I already have confirmation and I know the answer to this question. So I haven't really been praying on it anymore because I feel like God is just like, God is at a point where you you guys, what God is like, I'm not going to keep repeating myself to you. You know what I'm telling you to do, so you need to do it. So that's also another thing why you need to really get into the word and really understand how God communicates to you because God is not going to keep repeating himself. He'll send you a sign or two, but after that, if you neglect to see what God is sending you, he is going to keep doing his thing. And whether you grab onto it or not, it's just like, okay, people telling you, you just neglected to see what's going on. You confirm what they told you. I confirmed it back to you. And now you're still asking for a sign. So don't be blind to what it is that you're praying for you know when god is telling you to move know what god is saying to you and know how to hear his voice and it could just be that you hear his voice but you don't like what he's saying so um that's also me right now too i feel like (laughs) god is really working on me in this episode you guys i'm saying stuff that i was not planning on saying and i know that it's not even towards you it's towards myself but we're gonna keep going so thank you god (laughs) but um you have to be able to just know because with me, let me tell y'all, I'll pray. Last year, I was the fasting queen. You know, I did so many fasts. I did probably like five or seven, five to seven fasts last year. I did a three day fast, a five day fast, a seven day fast, a nine day fast, um, a 24 hour fast. Like, I did a week fast. Like, I, I was fasting and God came through. And I realized that, like, when I did my seven day fast, I was that was for my apartment. And I did seven days. 
for seven things and seven reasons um, why I wanted to do these things. So God came back and he confirmed it. He showed me where I was going to be moving. And my rent is $777. If you don't believe me, I got my lease contract. I can show y'all. <laughs> my rent is $777. Um, I did a fast for my relationship for five days because we were dating for five years. I did five things that I was believing him for. Five reasons why I wanted to get those things answered. God came back to me and confirmed that information um, with five reasons why I should let it go. Um... It was a hard pill to swallow, but I was prepared. So you have to be prepared for when God says yes and when God says no. Because in this situation, he said yes for me moving. And he said yes for me moving forward with that project. But on the other hand, what I was believing for in our relationship, God was like, no. And I still was trying to pray about it. Literally, you guys, after I did that five day fast, me and him did a week fast trying to figure out, you know, what we were supposed to do. And I told him, you know, God didn't reveal anything different from what he's already revealed, which was true. I had been praying every day for us, to praying that, you know, God would see some kind of way where we could figure it out. And God was silent. And I asked him by like that Sunday or Monday because I still hadn't asked, said anything regarding what God had affirmed to me because God didn't tell me anything from what he's already told me. God was like, no, and I'm not going to keep telling you, no, you heard me the first time. So don't keep asking me. So you need to do what you need to do. And I realized that by me disobeying him, I was only prolonging a better relationship that could be on the way. So. That next week came and my ex-boyfriend ended up reaching out to me, asking me, you know, well, did you do your prayer? And I was like, yeah, I prayed for a week and a couple of days. And to be honest, God didn't reveal anything to me. And he was like, yeah, me either. <laughs> and I was like, are you serious? And he was like, yes. Yeah. So I was like, you know, we pretty much know what this means. And so, you know, we took it from there. We decided to go our separate ways. So, you know, it was just like, God's not saying around finna play with y'all. He ain't finna play with me. He ain't finna play with you. Okay, so you have to be able to know and understand. And it's not, in my case, it wasn't a fact that I didn't know. I knew what God was telling me. God told me no. He told me to let that relationship go. And I was neglected. I was like, no, I've been with this guy for five years. I'm so comfortable. He's been everywhere. We see each other all the time. We talk every day. Like, he's just, it doesn't get no better than this. Like, yeah, he got a few flaws. I'm not perfect, you know. And God was like, I get what you're saying, but just trust me. Let it go. And so, Again, hard pill to swallow, but I did it. And let me tell y'all, I don't even like now when I try to think about him, I don't think about him. God, when I try to think about him, God is just like, no, remember he did this. And God's not the type of person that's going to punish him or, you know, me for choosing to stick around. But he's just reminding me that I let, he's giving me those five reasons why he told me to let it go. You know, it's like, you know, yeah, you love him, but this happened. Yeah, you love him, but I have better for you. Yeah, you love him, but I love you more. So I'm not going to allow you to continue to make the wrong mistakes in relationships when I know that you're capable of more. You know your potential now. You know what I'm calling you to do. I've answered your prayers previously, and I'm going to continue to answer them. So this year, I am believing God for a better relationship. And I know that that's going to come. And like I said in previous episodes, I feel like that's going to come soon. I really just am like aesthetic about it because it's like, oh, am I ready? But I feel like God has already prepared me and it's not going to take. And I feel like God is telling me it's not going to take you five years to get over this relationship because I decided I did a um, cleansing fast from that relationship, from any soul ties, from any bondages that was, I was held up in God last year, I actually thank you God <laughs> last year I did a when I did the five day fast I did one I did a nine day fast for me to figure out what it is that I was doing wrong in a relationship and to figure out what it is that I can improve on not just in relationships but like in romantic relationships but in relationships period and what it is that I can work on and trust me I still have a lot of growing to do but I've changed you know I've done the things that God has shown me that I needed to work on and I can honestly say it works out for the better because even with myself, I was at a low point where, you know, I was insecure of things. Like, if you know me way back then, like in high school, I was, I didn't care about my, like, thighs and my certain stuff that I don't, that I wouldn't care about then, I care about now. And I know that was because I have been dealing with people or in relationship with people that 
are insecure and that those things bounced over to me. So now I find myself being a little bit more insecure than I ever have been. And recently God was just like, you need to stop that. Like you are the same person you was back then. And like I said, I know that, you know, it's a hard pill to swallow, (laughs) but you have to be able to be real with yourself, even when it hurts, because that was a hard reality that I wasn't willing to admit to myself. And God revealed that to me. And he revealed a lot of things that I didn't really even know. So I'm just like, wow. And I feel like, again, he's saying that it's not going to take you five years to get over this person. It may even take you five months. Um, I honestly feel like I'm literally over it. Of course, I still care about this dude but I don't want to hinder you know what God has for him and what God has for me because he's not a bad dude but I just think that we're not for each other and maybe we are for each other and it's not the right time and I'm not even going to say that because I honestly feel like you know God has already confirmed that you know he's not the person for you and I'm not the person for him so yeah you have to be able to know what God is saying so when you're in a situation and you're praying and you feel like God is not answering it's because God has already answered you and I'm laughing because this is literally the story of my life right now I'm not going to get into that just yet I'll probably talk about it later but yeah so and just remember that in any time that God is silent, it's because he knows that you know what it is that is going on. He knows that you know the answer and you're trying to persuade him to change his mind. And it's not going to work. You can't manipulate God. You can manipulate yourself and sit here and be blindsided and think that, oh, you know, this ain't what it is, whatever. This is just happened for coincidence. And for a person like me, I know that coincidence don't exist. I feel like there are things that you know, you just know. So you have to be able to be real with yourself. Stop faking it and just pray, pray through the process, pray through. For me, like I said, God communicates through dreams. So whenever he's showing me a dream, it's something that's going to happen later. So I guess I should honestly be in a preparation season for what God is revealing to me in my dreams. And I'm not doing that because I don't agree (laughs) with what God is showing me. And it's like I said previously, it doesn't matter what I want. It doesn't matter what I feel because God knows best. So it's like, yeah, I don't agree, but God is like, either you get on board or you don't. All you're doing is delaying the process and not even because these things are st- like uh, still unfolding in front of me and I'm just like not ready. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, God, no, you need to stop. And God's like, no, like I told you, I prepared you for this. I've been showing you and revealing things to you and you're still sitting here praying about something that I've already answered you now the time is coming the things are unfolding and either you're going to be ready or you're not and if you're not ready you're just going to delay the process that I have for you and you have to be willing to trust God more than you trust yourself and I'm a control freak and I literally prayed about this yesterday because something happened and it freaked me out I'm just like wait a minute what like and so I had to ask God like you know Lord that you forgive me for being so in control for trying to make decisions on my own when I'm supposed to be leading after you or not leading. See, that's my problem. I'm not supposed to be leading, but I'm supposed to be following in your footsteps. So the footsteps that you've paved in the sand are supposed to be steps for me to finish walking in. And with me, it's like, I don't want to do that. I want to pray about this relationship or pray about this house or pray about this new job. And I just want you to give me the job that I want. Let me tell y'all the job that I have now, I wanted to, Um, when I moved to Atlanta, I wanted to get on with this company and it didn't happen. And right when I got ready to leave, I got an interview, but I had already moved and I was like, God, I missed my spot. Like this was supposed to be the job that got me where I wanted to go. And I ended up taking several other jobs, like four of the jobs all part time before I ended up getting with this company. But God had to prove me to show me that it's not your timing. And if you haven't heard the previous episode um his time and not my own I highly suggest you go back and listen to it because it's really good and it talks about the timing of God and you know that we do things in his timing and not our own and that's gonna be in this episode too it's not your time and it's his he knows the plans that he has for your life because he created you he knows how your life is gonna go you don't know that so we have to slow down and get on the pace with God because we can't move ahead of him and when he moves when we move ahead he slows us down so you know God sent me I feel like I've been I went on a detour because I wanted to do things the way I wanted to do them and God was like no so you want to do things your way let's do it so we did things my way and I took a detour um it took me a whole nother year for me to get this job and 
God was just, and now I'm here and I'm just like, God, had I just waited on you and trusted you, I could have been here sooner and I could have been doing more stuff. But God was like, you know, I already knew this was going to happen. This was already planned out. So I feel like there is a point where you have to just say to yourself, am I going to delay what God has for me? Because God knows the desires of my heart. He knows what we need versus what we want. So whatever you're praying for, believe that anything you ask in prayer, God will do, you know, and that is so serious that taking me to Matthew 21, 22. If you believe you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer, if you believe. So if you believe that these things are going to happen and you will receive them by praying. So you're praying for the things that you're believing God for, but You have to also believe that God has the best interest in our hearts. So whatever God is revealing to you, you've prayed for this and you're believing him for it. So he's going to grant you these things. Are you going to be delaying the prayers that you're asking for? Are you going to get on board and trust God? And again, that's not only towards you, but towards me because yeah, I'm just, I'm still not on the bandwagon and I need to get on there and I just can't. And I'm still praying about it. God's working on me still. You know, we're walking through this journey together. But I just highly recommend you look back over it. Start getting your journals. Um, that's the next step. Start getting your journals. Start writing down things that you're praying for. What you're believing for in this year. Um, and then next year when it comes, you'll be able to look back over. And you won't stress as much. Probably not at all. I can tell you I have been stress free. I haven't really been stressed about anything except for the situation that's going on. I'm not really stressed about it, but it's just, it's worrying me a little bit. Not even worrying. I don't even know what word to use to describe this situation. And regrettably, I can't tell you guys about it yet, but later on, I will be able to. But this situation is just driving me crazy. Let's say that. It's not stressing me. I'm not worried. It's just crazy because I'm confused and I feel like I'm confused on my own. God has shown me these things. And like I said, I'm not on the bandwagon with it, but I do believe that, you know, I can't even say it out loud. So, yeah, let's keep going. Um, <laughs> God's still working on me, guys. So, I told y'all I'm not perfect. I still, God is still pruning me. Like I said, I, there's a lot of things that I need to learn. And being controlled is one of those things. But I really feel like getting a journal and jotting things down will help you. Because it will let you see, you know, where you was and where God got you from. Like I said, around the same time last year, I had just started the last job that I got before I started working with my new company. So I was working there and I was stressed. I was like, why am I here? Because I was looking for a job where I could just retire from or really not retire, but just looking for a job where I can work there until I start getting my business completely off the ground. Cause I don't, I'm not willing to just leave a nine to five to start working for myself until God says it's time. And I feel like when God tells me to do that, I'm going to be a little hesitant about that as well. I'm just, I already see that coming, but I wanted to be able to make sure that I was making the right decisions and I want to be at a company where I can just leave knowing that, you know, I made the right decision. So this job that I got was like, this isn't it, God, like, what am I doing? Like, why am I here? Why do you have me here? And God was showing me that because I previously had an interview at that job and this lady like disqualified me. And I talked about that in the beginning of the podcast, like, I think like the first and second episode, I may have to re-listen to one of those episodes and post it in here so you can hear it. But uh, when people disqualify you. So she had really disqualified me for this position when I knew I was good, well, and qualified. And not only that, but God qualifies us. So um, she disqualified me. We had an interview. It went terrible. And then a week later, I had another interview uh, with that same company with a different position. And I ended up getting offered the job right there on the spot. And I literally was in tears because I had just got beaten down. Like a, not even a week, like a couple of days before that. And I was working at another job that I hated. And I couldn't get with how they did things. And I was just like praying for and believing that God would send me this job. And so God was, that was just God showing me that don't ever let somebody beat you down. Don't ever not know your worth. Because if I call you to it, I qualified you. Nobody can disqualify you. And it was so crazy because when we had the interview, when I had the second interview, I walked past the lady that previously did my interview. And I know she knew who I was. And not only that, but when I got the job, she works hand in hand with the department that I work in. But we were pretty much like doing their work she had to come to us before she could do anything in her department and I thought that was so funny because you're sitting here disqualifying me but I'm qualified not only am I qualified but you have to come to me to get things that you need for your job so I thought that was funny so I saw this lady every day I know she knew who I was and 
it was just funny because I'm like, God, you have like such a sense of humor. Like you're so funny. Like people will literally bite their words and God doesn't have a problem showing people that, you know, you don't have the last say so. So whatever you're going through, remember that God got your back and remember to look back over your life because I'm telling you, you may feel like God hasn't done anything for you, but I promise you, you can find a million and one things that God has done for you. And I can honestly testify and say that God has done a lot for me, but I was also in previous seasons where I felt like God was never there for me, especially um, when my dad died. That was the biggest thing of my life. Like I said, I had lost people, family members, friends, people die all the time. But when my dad left, I wasn't expecting it. But now that I realize that, you know, God had already revealed that to me. It was just, it, it freaked me out because like I said, in another podcast episode, uh, when I discovered that I was, a, that's how God communicated to me through dreams. Um, when I was a little girl, I used to have a dream that, you know, my dad would, uh, like we stayed in these apartments on the back side of town in my city and he would come home from work and like he got, um, killed. So... I wasn't really understanding what was going on because at the time I really didn't make sense of, you know, what was going on. And I used to have this dream all the time. So I thought it was like, oh, I'm having a nightmare and I really don't know what it is that God is trying to tell me. Or not even, I wasn't even at a point where I felt like I didn't know what God was telling me. I didn't understand why I kept having it over and over. And, and as much as I tried to make it disappear or make it go away it wasn't and I really didn't understand it and I thought it was just like at the time I was a little girl so I was like oh I'm having this nightmare and I just don't understand what's going on and God revealed to me that it wasn't a nightmare it was him preparing me for what it is that was going to happen years later and I thought it was crazy because um, it was a dream that my dad was on his way home and these guys like came up to him and just killed him and they shot him several times. We heard the shots, we ran outside and we found him dead. It was like raining outside and the dreams would be so di- like different, but they all like were the same. It all ended with my dad being shot and killed. And like I said, at the time I was a, a younger girl, so I really didn't understand. So I would just cry, waking up crying like, oh, I had these nightmares. Like, what's going on with my dad? And like, like I said, in the, we lived in these apartments. So it was me dreaming that it was. So I'm thinking in my head like, oh, God, like something bad's going to happen. But I really didn't understand. So I would just brush it off because I'm like, you know, bad dreams. And so when I got older, you know, I didn't really have those dreams as often. I would have them like every now and then, but not really often to where I would just be like, okay, you know, whatever. I need to start seeking God because I wasn't, to be honest, I wasn't close to God like that at that time. I always knew God. We always went to church, but I wasn't so into with him like I am now. So fast forward to 2012, um, New Year's Day, my dad got shot and killed. He got shot 13 times and I just could not stand him. Like I literally... That was my heart, you know, and I didn't, it took me a while to shake back from that. And once I got on my feet and, you know, I started seeking God more and I wasn't going to, I'm not going to lie. I was angry with God because I felt like you did this. Like you took him from me. Why would you do that? Like, you know, he's the only person in this world that knows me. He's the only person that understands because me and my family were not close. Me and my mom, when I was younger, we had a great relationship. But as I got older, maybe like middle school, we just started going back and forth with some things and I was back and forth with my dad's house at family members house I've stayed with everybody but that's for another podcast episode we're not gonna get into that today but moral of the story is know how God communicates to you because even still when that day came I was not prepared and it wasn't because I didn't know what was going on or it was because I really didn't understand what was going on because I didn't know how God communicated with me I didn't know that God was showing me like you know I'm preparing you for this because God knew how close we were and I feel like no matter how many times God reveals something to me I'm never prepared so yeah um he died he got killed and like four years later I finally got my life back together and I started seeking God again because for three years I was angry with him I was still talking to him praying to him going to church but I 
didn't really understand. And then I was going through all this stuff. I was failing college and I had got kicked out of an apartment and I was trying to do things in my own strength and I really didn't know what I was doing. I didn't really have a lot of guidance. Like I said, my mom wasn't around at that time. Um, she was going through some personal things and I'm just like, I don't know what to do. So I tried to get myself back on track. And then like later, maybe like a year later, like 2014, 2015-ish, um, I start realizing that, you know, God was still seeking me, still blessing me in those times. And, you know, once I started to, that was like really, that was when I joined the church and I really started understanding how God communicated to me. And I was like, wow, like God had been communicating to me this whole time that, you know, a day would come where my dad would not be here. So I need to be prepared to be doing life without him. But I did not want to understand what God was saying and I missed out on three or four years of my life and I talk about this in another podcast episode too so I'm not going to go too much in detail more about it because I already said a lot about it already but just to let you know that happened for real so when I have dreams um they're not they never really 100% are what goes on in the dreams but there's like 99% stuff happened like I said yeah we were living in those apartments he didn't die in those apartments but um, he did get killed at night. It wasn't raining. Um, but he did get killed and he did get shot. So those two things lined up, even though it wasn't at the same location and the weather wasn't right. So <laughs> it was 50, 50. So, you know, stuff still happened. And, you know, that's why when every dream that I have, is not a, a dream or a communication with God. So if God speaks to you through dreams, don't think that everything you have a dream about, it's like, Oh God's telling me this. It's like, no. If this is something for me, if it's something where I can wake up and nearly start to finish, remember everything that happens, I know that there's something into that. And if it's something that correlates with reality, like if it's about a person that I know or a situation that I know or something that could potentially happen in real life. Um, for instance, I had a dream that um, my ex-boyfriend was on Facebook talking about me and my sister ran into my room to tell me like, girl, look, you know, your ex-boyfriend is on Facebook going off about you saying that you was this and that, da, da, da. And, you know, the next day um, I was at work and my sister came to my desk and she was like, hey, look at this. And I'm in my head thinking like, what, he on Facebook selling out? And she was like, no, it was actually her ex on Facebook, um, you know, going off. And I'm not going to get too into detail of that, but you get what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't always line up specifically on what it was in the dream because in the dream it was me and my ex but it really was her and her ex but it's still the content was still on Facebook it didn't happen at home because it, it happened in the dream it happened that she ran into my room and told me but it happened at work she ran into my desk and told me because we were together and we worked like around the corner from each other so yeah so you get what I'm saying like it doesn't and that's why it's so hard to like really make sense of a lot of dreams for me because it's not 100% clear so I feel like the context of the dream is true, but the way that it's going to happen is not 100% the same way. But God is showing me a glimpse of something that's going to come to pass and I have to get prepared for it so that when it comes to pass, I'm not freaking out because I'm overdramatic. But God knows and he's so I feel like him communicating to me through dreams is like awesome because I can't sit here and go back and forth. I'm at peace. I'm asleep. I'm out of my business and I have no choice but to sit here and dream literally and so when I wake up I'm just like wait a minute what happened like god let's talk about it and so like now like I said I've been having these dreams and I've been having them for a while and now that the things that have happened in my dreams are coming to reality and I'm like god I don't know what to do like (laughs) I really don't but um yeah so I hope this episode helped you um, to remember, I know a lot of people say move from the past, move on from it, but I would highly suggest, yes, move on from it, but never forget what God brought you from, you know, um, journal, start writing down things or keeping things in your calendar and keeping it somewhere where you can always access it. Because I feel like the past should always be there, but in a good way to be able to reflect on what God has brought you through. So whatever you're going through right now, I guarantee you, you won't be going through it next year. You won't be going through it in the next six months. Cause like I said, God turned my life around literally from, um, last year around this time to December and then January through now has been a totally different year. Like I'm not in the same relationship. I'm not at the same 
place I was living at. I'm not at the same job. I don't make the same money. Like God has really elevated me. And it's because last year I spent my whole year praying and being in preparation and being able to be pruned so that when these things come to me, I know how to deal with them. And I know that God is going to restore the things that I let go of last year. So God has already given me a new job. He's given me a new place and I'm looking to get confirmation about moving back to Atlanta or if I should just save to buy a home here. Like I said, regardless of either choice, I still have to save. So that's what I'm planning on doing. I'm planning on saving my money because whether he says yes to Atlanta, I'll have the money to go. And whether he says no to Atlanta and he says that I can stay here and buy a home, then I'll still have the money. You get what I'm saying? So don't look at the nose as a bad thing because God knows what's best for you. And I'm um, looking to, you know, save more money. So make a plan, get a budget and system together. Start planning ahead because when God sends those blessings your way, you don't want to miss out on those. You don't want to delay them because you're only putting yourself back at a hindrance for what God has for you. You know, if it's sent from God, it's abundant. You know, God blesses us in so many ways that we may not even realize. A small thing is waking up is a blessing because somebody didn't wake up this morning. So don't ever take anything for granted. And I'm just at that place now where it's just like I'm literally putting God first and praying about everything. And literally, um, I need to stop praying for things that God has already answered me because he's not answering me anymore. And I can literally say like my close friends know about this. You know, I've caught it. I'm like, I don't understand what's going on. I'm praying about this. God is not really responding he's just sending me more dreams now this stuff happened in reality i'm freaking out i don't know what's going on but at the end of the day i know that it's going to be okay and like i said i know that these things are going to come to pass the th- thing that freaks me out about it is because i don't know which content is going to be true so at the end of the day or how it's like gonna actually take place because like i said that dream i had about my ex-boyfriend wasn't even about me um, it was about my sister and it happened in the same way, but in a different place. And the thing with my dad, the same thing happened, but in a different place. So it's like the context of what's going on in the dreams are true, but the where and how they happen are the different. So it's like the things that are in these dreams, I'm like, Oh my God, I cannot deal with this. Like, okay, literally I have to figure something out. So I know God will give me strength for that because he's already prepared me. So Ask God what it is that he wants you to do. So I hope this was very information that you are very useful information that you can use in your life. Get a journal, put God first, figure out how God communicates with you, figure out how God confirms those things that you're praying for and stay faithful to remembering what God brought you through because God is not here to leave you. He will never leave you astray and it, Whatever you're going through, he can definitely get you through that. So I hope this was very, very useful. I will leave everything that I mentioned in this episode in the notes so you can check it out. And let me know if you need help. I'm here. Y'all have my handles. Contact me. If you know me personally, contact me. I will walk you through this. We'll get through it together. But I hope you have a wonderful week. Stay positive through all of everything that's going on. And keep shining as the gems you are. Bye.